Hi, everybody. My name is Noble Dracone. I am the guest host today for TV and Latoka. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Today, we're going to get a chance to listen to Quanto Pay. Uh, Bogdan is going to share information on his company. We're going to talk about blockchain, DeFi, finance, financial services, and banking. And then afterwards, we'll kind of do a Q&A and start discussing the topic. So, Bogdan, uh, please tell us about Quanto Pay and let's dive in. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Bogdan. I'm a VP of engineering at QuantoPay. I uh, have over seven years experience in uh, software development, information security, and uh, mostly I worked on uh, fintech and social networking projects. Uh, about QuantoPay, our founders, uh, the idea was born in uh, 2016. Uh, by our funders, which are from the uh, financial sector, and uh, they found that uh, the traditional finance needs uh, this needs to be disrupted with the blockchain and uh, and the uh, decentralized finance. <clears throat> okay, so the current problems that we had is that uh, uh, the younger generations, millennials, and Generation Y are. Uh, not that trusty with the traditional banking systems and they are more tech savvy and they like uh, things to uh, move faster and be more responsive so uh, we tried uh, to uh, came up with a, a, a nice solution to bring them all together into a, a, a nice intuitive and uh, easy one-stop uh, provider for the younger generations our solution is to bring them all together through uh, smart pending asset management, uh, traditional finance, decentralized finance, and issue tech. Through different partnerships, we, we have it in the plan to achieve different uh, functionalities that will be more easy to use in a one stop uh, app. Uh, okay, our team uh, is currently. Uh, all over the world uh, uh, our uh, uh, development team is uh, based in romania and uh, uh, sorry i'm a little bit uh, nervous with uh, this uh, Bogdan was so kind to replace our main speaker, actually. So he he just jumped in today for Yeah, for yeah, this. take your time. No worries. No worries. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we are, we are uh, more than 80 people working on the project uh, for right now, as uh, per March 2021. And uh, we are trying to change the financial future of this world through our technology. Uh, market data, uh, there is a total available market of uh, 3.2 uh, billion. Serviceable available market is 1.7 billion. And serviceable optimal market is uh, uh, 660 million. Uh, this uh, was uh, done by uh, our uh, uh, team uh, research for the past years. And uh, we, came, we came to the conclusion that these uh, are the numbers and it's somewhere around that. Okay. Our uh, go-to-market strategy is uh, focused mostly on the younger generations through different methods like uh, smart distribution referral campaigns, uh, our community app. Uh, our community app is uh, an app that we developed in-house, which uh, we are targeting to keep a more uh, close relationship with the community and the most interested uh, people from our community. And if you will have a look on the community, you'll see that uh, you will have the chance to vote our features in the future. So we are taking a more dynamic approach in how our app should be developed because uh, uh, mostly the the, uh, uh, the world dictates how it should be. And I'm a big fan of the dynamic approaches in everything I do. Okay, uh, our plan, uh, it's uh, 
to start uh, to, uh, for our app to be released uh, this year. Our business model will be uh, subscription based. Uh, uh, our release model will be like uh, we, we want to increase the demand and make the app uh, more needed by the people. So in the first year it will be free, but with limited availability until we, we can scale the app and add more uh, uh, features like a subscription based model, crypto, uh, the, the decentralized finance, etc. And uh, from the, from there we plan to expand more. But uh, in the first year we are going to start in Europe. Okay, and after our first years, the next two years are, are focused on development and expanding and registering new banking licenses and making new partnerships that will help us bring the one solution, one stop solution together. Uh, our revenue streams will come from uh, different parts, mostly fees and packages, interest from lending, from maybe uh, the uh, decentralized finance, card and transactions fees, uh, robot trading. Uh, uh, competitors. Well, uh, with this, we had in mind just to show what uh, we are planning to have in the future and what our competitors has right now. Uh, in regards to the crypto and the centralized finance integration, there seems to be uh, some of them, but they are not connected with the traditional fin finance, and this is what we are trying to do. Uh, Revolut actually uh, handles this part, but uh, they limited the technology because uh, most of the providers do that. We are targeting to have also cloud uh, device-based wallets and cloud-based wallets, so we'll be more transparent with our community and with the people that are using the app. Uh, partnerships, through different partnerships with uh, uh, Visa, Contis, we will achieve this functionality. Currently, uh, Visa is our uh, uh, main uh, card provider. And uh, yes, and the Quanto coin is uh, how our our project started, and uh, it's our crypto part. Our mid history, we uh, uh, appeared in uh, in a different. Uh, media articles, news in the past. You can check it out, see. Uh, regarding the financial rounds, we are targeting for uh, three series, series A, B, and C, and the uh, pre uh, the seed and angel uh, investment that uh, 600,000 or are already collected, and we are targeting 1 million. Uh, funding proceeds. Here we want to split them, but uh, mostly we'll go on the research and the development of the product because this is where our our focus is. Uh, uh, some part will go on marketing, and the rest will be in operations, expenses, uh, uh, new licenses to register, and uh, other costs. Uh, Thank you, and you can take a sneak peek of the Quanto Pay, and you can vote what kind of features you would like in the future on our community app. That QuantoPay.com. Thank you, Bogdan. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's great. Uh, you know, next I want to kind of go through and introduce the panelists and get uh, not only their background, their experience, but also their opinion on Quanto Pay. Uh, first, I'd like to start with Nico of Evercoin. Miko, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, Evercoin, and your thoughts on the layout of QuantumPay. You're muted, Miko. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, you know, I I do uh, I am a, a founder uh, of a wallet. It's a Evercoin mobile wallet. Uh, we do have some really interesting uh, self custody and security features. So you know, definitely uh, check it out in your local app store. So uh, with respect to um, you know, just kind of looking at the broader context, obviously uh, the payment space is is very crowded. So you know, I think my my concerns around it would be uh, obviously. 
you know, I do see some nice partners, uh, so that's that's always beneficial. But you know, I, I I do think it's a it's a it's definitely a very large total addressable market, as you pointed out. So that's accurate. But uh, you know, obviously, it's a uh, uh, you know it's a it's it's difficult to have a kind of a, a really head and shoulders uh, differentiation. So you know, I, I'd love to kind of dig into that a little bit, but that's, that's kind of my broader perspective, but, you know, I definitely for someone who was just thrown into the, the shark tank, so to speak, uh, you know, you did a great job. So I really, really appreciate you uh, stepping up today. So thank, thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next, I'd like to come to, to, to Gary. Uh, Gary, you know, tell us about yourself, give us your background as well as uh, what you thought about Quantum Pay's uh, presentation and, and, and where we can go from here. Yeah, yeah. So great to be here. Great to see you, my friend Noble. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. I've done 17 companies, been involved in two unicorns, uh, Click Software. We founded that. Uh, I was on the original management team of uh, back in the early 2000s. And uh, that company was sold to Salesforce for $1.35 I was on the original team. And also EVA.ai, AI HR tech company that I founded with Dr. David Yang from Russia who now lives in California. Uh, I love AI and quantum computing. I've, I've written a lot of articles about it. In fact, I got another one coming out on AI and uh, cybersecurity. Decentralized cybersecurity should be this week. Um, what else? Uh, I'm the CEO, president, and co-founder of Get Shit Done Venture Studios, premier AI and quantum venture studio located in Silicon Valley, helping people, companies and people from all over the world go global using Silicon Valley support. So, yeah. So in terms of the presentation, I think that, you know, you're good at, you did a good job in terms of just being thrown into it. You know, the, the idea the Miko said the total address of market, that's right. You got to go down through and, you know, I didn't get the differentiation. I wasn't sure, you know, exactly the value proposition. So I would focus on that a bit more if I was you. You did have some name brand um, uh, companies listed, which is good, but you need to you need to really talk about the value. And if you want to grab somebody's attention, you got to really be able to paint pictures with words. So you need that kind of a wow statement that grabs their attention and holds them from their soul to be able to really um, impact the presentation. But you know, it, it takes time. Uh, Steve Jobs, it took him six weeks to prepare to do his speaking engagements when he would go on, uh, go on stage at the Moscone Center. He was not a good speaker. So it just takes time, but you did a good job for what it is. And, you know, I'd love to hear more about it. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gary. So uh, i give you a little bit of background myself. I've been in the investment industry for over 28 years. I've written seven books on trading and investing. My last two were Trade Like a Pro and Winning the Trading Game. Uh, I run a, a boutique kind of crowdfunding company called Racon Capital Partners, in which we pair up accredited investors with uh, opportunities and businesses. I'm also on the board of M Accelerator, uh, one of the top tier accelerator incubator companies in uh, Los Angeles that attracts people from around the world. Uh, to participate, and we've got several companies uh, that we've had multiple investment, uh, major investors in. We have Richard Branson actually looking at one of our companies now uh, to participate in. Uh, I'm also the president of Where Play Games, in which we focus on NFT, decentralized finance using NFTs as a staking mechanism, and gaming, and how that the whole gaming is going to be a new gig economy. As I'm watching your presentation, uh, I think you hit on some really good high-level points. And uh, Buna Ziwa, I spent a lot of time in Romania. I love Romania. Uh, my, my books were translated into Romanian. So, Future Spencer Romici Speculatori. So, I spent a lot of time there. So, when you said the development team was in Romania, I was very proud because I, I know there's a lot of good technical institutes and, and developers there. Uh, the only thing that I can say, though, is that I, to, to echo Nico, uh, was I didn't know who your customer was. You stated that you were going to focus on millennials and uh, Gen Z, and I, and I get that, but the reality is everybody's targeting them, right? They have, there's Plasma Pay, there's multiple companies. Plasma Pay, which is a, a, an analog to what you guys do, they're further, they're very aggressive in flying full integration. 
So I'm trying to understand who your customer is. Secondly, you talked about the Quano coin, but then you glossed over it. We don't know if it's going to be an IDO. We don't know if it's going to be an IFO. I don't know if it's going to be on the Binance chain, if, it, if you plan on uh, being on. So there's a lot, there's some really good salient points that you, you hit on, but you hit at such a high level that I would rather you say, we know that we have 1 million customers who look like this, operate like this, and do this, and we're going to do X, Y, Z to attain those, then look at numbers of 660 million. You know, a company that has a million customers doing transactions can do phenomenally well. So I think that's really the only uh, critique I had. It was great as a high level, but I'd love to see the narrow down of who you guys are, and I just didn't see that in that particular presentation. Yeah, thank you, Noel. This, of course, we uh, when we had the test run, um, we still had a 44 pages slide, which was down from 75 pages, with all the information what you're just wondering about, of course. And uh, Chiara asked us kindly to downsize it to 10 pages, five minutes. So that's why lots of lots of uh, those questions, of course, could not be answered. Or oh, we're not right addressed, but the answers are there. So it's it's um, so if I jump in, it's, it's uh, I'm I'm um, I I have the pleasure of being like most po the, the the main investor in this whole project, and I became somehow a, um, um, advisor and 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 partner. It's, it's like it's a big team of investors and partners. Um, and it's a beautiful journey. We've been most probably, at least in Europe, um, one of the first who were thinking about the problem itself. So 2016, we were sitting with some, with the co-founders, um, which came all from the big banks, and they were just, um, they saw how, it, how the banking system works um, with all their disadvantages, and said, look, we have to do it differently. And the solution is blockchain. So back then, it was pure. The idea was to establish a, a, a finance system with own banking license purely on blockchain. Uh, that didn't work out quite well when 2018 uh, Visa and Master suddenly stepped back and said, "Sorry, guys, whatever is blockchain, we don't really understand, or at least the the regulators they don't understand." So we had to go for our own normal banking license first. Um, what we're doing at the moment is through Contis, um, and later on we will uh, we have our own banking license. Uh, uh, so for now we have we are covered for UK and Europe. Yeah, and so what we have we have um, we call it the second generation challenger bank. So uh, Gary, you mentioned the, the 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 it's pretty crowded out there. It's not. It's not at least not in Europe. US is pretty packed, and in US you have um, customers still trusting somehow the banks. You have in Europe, the rest of the world, there's among millennials, Generation Y, uh, kids, a big mistrust towards the, the, um, the established banking system. Yeah, you, can, you can notice that from all the neo banks which tried to pop up and they failed. Royal Bank of Scotland, they tried um, their own bank, as you know, and lots of funding, lots of marketing. They only managed in one year, I think, 1,000 subscribers. So it's simply, uh, it's not working. So you need to have a fresh new uh, startup coming with the right message, with the right background. So we have uh, one of our messages, sustainability. We're using our cards. We're only using um, uh, uh, recycled plastic, for instance. We, a certain amount of, of, of uh, investments uh, going into sustainable projects, whether it's for uh, kids' projects, it's for sport, it's for uh, animal rights. And uh, recently, now we've been in discussion with a Bahama-based uh, coral farm so that we, uh, we, we support uh, coral growing um, uh, in, in, in the Bahamas. So this is like, that's, that's our message. Yeah? So yeah. we want 
Alex, we want to, we want want to give this, to, yeah, Sorry. This is scary. Listen, what I would do, and I've done this a lot of times, right? We did it with Click Software when we rejigged that company. Uh, so here's what I would do. I think it's great, but you got to have that as a point. It's a wow statement. We care, right? Just put we care, those two words, and then talk about it. And I think that's a great way to get your point across because sustainability is one of the targets today for the groups. And when you talk about coral reefs, when you talk about giving back, they want to hear it. So I would just use that as a, one of the points. You just, you got to like be really succinct and use words to paint pictures. And that's it. I mean, it's, it's tough if you haven't done this presentation a lot because you can't ad lib and interject, but those are the points that are going to get their attention. And they yep. won't forget you. The key is you don't want them to forget you when you come out of this presentation, whether that's customers or investors. Yeah. yeah. No, if you would check our yeah, web pages, it's, it's on the it's yeah. on the web pages uh, mentioned. But I understand for the even there's limited space on investor pages. The, these are the the main words to be used. Yeah, but it's a bit to to, ping, to to piggyback a little bit on what uh, Gary's saying. We we or constantly train people on how to do a 10 to 15 page slide. And one of those core things is just to Gary's point, not only we care, but really showing the problem solution set very clearly, what problem you're solving, the solution you're presenting. And between yeah. showing that and the solution immediately, you, you, you eliminate the questions in our minds later. And so, you know, like yeah. you said, you have to pare down because what we do is we'll have to create at least two to three presentations, right? You'll have the presentation for the investors, which will be a 45 or 75 page slide because they really want to know in depth. But then you have the yeah. wow presentation of 10 to 15 pages that are all about the sizzle and all about the, the beautiful images of the millennials and, and the and, you know Gen Z are talking about the World Bank of Scotland failing and doing the acquisition and why you guys will succeed and then leading to your value props. I think that you guys have... Yeah. Again, I, I, I'm going to research the website. I like it. I'm going to check out everything that, that's presented. And I would love, love to get more in depth to learn more about it because you guys uh, are in a good space. And I want to see what I missed. But at the end of the day, you, you won't have so many people forgiving. And what, what are your thoughts, Miko? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I definitely want to underline that. You know, I, I think to me, I you know, I, I don't want to be too sharp elbow, but I also want to say something that will be helpful. So, you know, to me, like, you know, I, I think I, I had a similar reaction around the geography. Like, you know, I, I did go to the Romanian blockchain summit, uh, you know, in, in the majestic, uh, you know, building. And so, you know, I was definitely very, uh, you know, impressed by the uh, local culture, impressed by the developer talent. So I was, you know, so I definitely was like, you know, excited to hear about all this for, for sure. You know, I, from my perspective, like I'm kind of stuck in the Silicon Valley kind of pitch culture, right? So in a sense, like, I think the shortness of the deck isn't actually, in a sense, it's like a, it's like a, you know, a very short, compressed data, like a, you know, a poem or, you know, so for me, I'm very much a fan of the Sequoia pitch deck template, which I think you largely followed, which I like, but like, in a sense, there's an exercise, right? And in a sense, what I think entrepreneurs do often is they often really want to be understood. And that's a, a pitfall. It's a pitfall. Like, it's like, why do you want to be understood? Like, the re here's the reality. The reality is, is that in 10 years of me actually being in the trenches with you doing your business, I probably still wouldn't understand what you're doing. Right. So, <laughs> so you know, so the idea of trying to be understood, uh, it, you know, VCs don't, they're not domain experts, right? They're, they're very kind of generalists, right? In, you know, obviously each VC has their own personal domain. Right. So they come, every VC comes from somewhere. Right. But, but that being said, the odds that they come from wherever it is that you come from is zero. Like it's very close to zero. Right. So, so I think one of the problems with entrepreneur pitch decks is they're often wanting to be understood. Right. And in a sense, like I think you want to create something that I call the Lego house. Right. The Lego house is the simplest one sentence explanation of it. But really, the goal of this displaying this is not to be understood as what it is. I think that, like, 
uh, when you see a Lego house, like your reaction is, oh, it's a house, right? So, so it's like, oh, okay, you understood that much. That's about how much you need to understand. The part that the part that they need to understand is their investment thesis, which is an if then statement. And the, and the then part of the if then statement is always exactly the same, which is the then part is then we'll all be rich. That's the then part. It's always the same, right? So the if part is the big part that you have to solve, right? So, so, you know, to me, when I see this, I think, I think if they can execute really well, then we'll all be rich, right? But the thing that is that, but that's, but that's an if that's kind of true of every single pitch, right? So, so in a sense, like if every single pitch can execute really well, obviously there's also issues of business timing, right? I kind of mm -hmm. understand your pitch broadly from a business timing perspective. So I just kind of accept it as face value, right? So your business timing is basically blockchain is going bananas, we're gonna leverage that technology. It's it'll be awesome, which I agree with. So I'm very I'm already there. I'm like okay, great. I love that. So the why now is is good. I'm good with that, right? But then the question becomes execution. So to me, like the thing that becomes really fungible in these pitches is the slider between founding team experience and traction, right? So in a sense, that becomes the proxy for early stage execution right so in a sense like you know if you don't if you have traction start with traction if you don't have traction basically start with the team slide but as soon as you start with the team slide uh you're 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 telling everyone it's early right now the good news about that mm -hmm. is is that you know if you just signal we're early you know you may get a valuation ding but people don't mind right like a vc doesn't mind like if you open with the team slide and be like look at my team Right. Then people recognize that as, OK, I see what this is. Like, this is a, this is really early. I'm going to get a great price. I like it already. <laughs> right. Whereas okay. if you start with whereas if you start with traction, then it's like, oh, whoa, whoa. OK, like, all right, this is already happening. I better get on. So that's that's my that's my that's my pitch to you. Thanks, Miko. Thank, thank, thank you for your honest speech. <laughs> I didn't expect anything former Silicon Valley guy, anything else. It's like, <laughs> we are very unfortunate that we are very fortunate that we are not in Silicon Valley. So we have, we are the, the one eyed one eyed under the blind, I would say, the rest of the world <laughs> is, uh, so we have, thankfully we have, uh, I don't know whether you know those names, uh, but um, Mubadala, um, for instance, is, is interested in, in investing, but they are waiting for Series A, so they don't invest anything below 100. And um, we are at the moment in discussion with Qatar um, QSTP, uh, uh, Science Technology Park, they're investing a substantial amount. So for, for this part of the world, uh, we may not be able to impress you guys, but we impress uh, for Europe. We are um, pretty much ahead of of uh, most most of them. Uh, and Middle East, uh, Asia, uh, like not you cannot generalize Asia, but it's like our next steps is like Middle East. Then it will be Indonesia, v uh, Philippines, Vietnam. So these are the the interesting market for markets for us. Incorporation usually with somebody else, remittance markets, crypto, crypto integration into normal life. Um, Europe, if you look at competition, there is no, we have two or three competitors on the, on the slide. Bogdan showed it a little bit. Uh, and they are struggling. Why are they struggling? They're in fact not, not really challenger banks. They're just um, digital banks. Call them like this. Yeah, they, they just have no offices, that's all. And, uh, and, and too slow, they have problems with their, uh, with their data processing. Um, they slowly, slowly start solving that. But that's exactly the problem. The same with the big banks. So we, watching them since a couple of years, you can see we are a little bit behind, but we do this intentionally, observing a bit. Nothing would have been worse, for instance, for us going live a year ago just before COVID, yeah, we would have collapsed. So thankfully, we've been a little bit behind that. Uh, keep on developing. And um, so Q2, so this summer, 
we're finally going live and we're pretty uh, um, pretty positive that that the yeah, the audience thanks. is going to like us you know we have maybe if you watch our our, our web page let me just mention that very we will. We'll soccer, we'll soccer is <laughs> we'll not a big subject soccer is not a big subject in, in 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 the us but it's getting actually it's getting, it's, it's coming up but we have uh, you know one of our main uh, fields of like communities the question is not only millennials it's about communities is uh, sport. So we, we have uh, amazing ambassadors, uh, Roberto Carlos, Michel Salgado, Patrick Kluver, um, uh, Luis Garcia, not sure you, you know those names. They are very loyal to us since, since the very beginning. And those football communities, soccer communities, um, um, we have as well um, equestrian polo communities interested in mainly crypto blockchain. Our own uh, Quanto coin has actually already been used. We have our own little football club where we are going to in implement um, the crypto as part of payment for football. So you know this kind of community is actually a very relevant. Plus, we for Qatar, why are we focusing on Qatar, you may ask. We are in discussions with um, the respective FIFA and Qatar Football uh, uh, Association for the upcoming championship. So, and together with, FIFA, uh, with Visa, the, uh, the plan is to, um, to bring, so to say, to FIFA transparency, what they desperately need, as you maybe know, all the scandals. So, Using blockchain not only as a word but in practice, um, that that FIFA is getting out of this image of um, intransparency and, and all this kind of money-related aspects. So this is very much in Europe and the Middle East uh, quite welcomed. And uh, from a technical perspective, it's of course all not rocket science, especially for someone from Silicon Valley for sure. But that's, uh, so we're going to switch, yeah. we're gonna switch to the discussion portion so we can get it in. But I do want to continue with you. So you're talk one thing that you did was the speed. If you notice, Uniswap has put out version fee in order to decrease Ethereum fees. And I kind of get you know your opinion because you guys are going to be doing crypto and DeFi and as part of your network. Are you guys going to be integrating with decentralized exchanges like Uniswap? And what do you feel about the, the, the 3.0 that's supposed to make it faster and decrease the fees in Ethereum? You address to us, to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you. You, you, are you, are you, are you, are you, you were a bit cut out. out in the... yeah, it's okay. Gary, did you want to take that? Did you hear about the Uniswap uh, change in the version 3.0 to decrease the fees from Ethereum? No, I didn't. And you're, it's breaking up a little bit, Noble. So for whatever reason, it's choppy. I don't think uh, Alexander heard what you were saying. It, I don't know what's going on. It's breaking up. Yeah. Technology, right? <laughs> Can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it's like uh, it was about speed, speed blockchain and so on. This is exactly yeah, yeah. That, that was, yeah. You, yeah. Okay, so this is yeah, that's exactly one of the aspects what we are working on at the moment. Yeah, the current speed of blockchain uh, sucks, of course. Yeah, so now as everyone is talking about the new generation um, uh, Ethereum, uh, and that's that's a game changer. And this is exactly what we the current um, our our uh, Quanto coin is still based on the old uh, uh, Ethereum. Uh, but we we're going to trans tran, uh, transform it hopefully to the faster one, and that makes a big difference, of course. Um, and th that's why we talk about the second generation challenger banks. Or actually, non almost none of the other challenger banks have really. I mean, Revolut. If you talk about the European market, they have it somehow. They they offer this, but it's it's just like used as a you can move your crypto to fiat and fiat to crypto, but that's it. But you don't really, the integration into everyday's life 
that for that you need definitely the the faster uh, crypto and this is exactly uh, what we are working on good it, and to you miko did, did what do you think about the new uniswap you know version 3.0 and, and yeah i'm excited I'm excited about it. I think the market was really funny this morning because it was basically on sell the news, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? So, you know, I, I, I think to me, the biggest thing is optimism PBC, which is the L2 stuff, which, you know, obviously this uh, V3 stuff will hit in, uh, I think it was, uh, what was it, like uh, April 5th or May 5th? I forgot, but the it's coming up soon. But it said L2 shortly thereafter, right? So I, I think the mm -hmm. net impact on this is going to be huge for DeFi. So, you know, I definitely think it's worth uh, everyone paying attention and tracking. You know, I think currently Ethereum prices are being suppressed by the bleed out into assets like NFT, but also, uh, you know, things like performance and congestion. So, you know, I, I do think having uh, major, major rollouts on things like optimism, you know, Matic, Slash, Polygon, uh, ZK Rollups, Loopring, you know, these are all super uh, beneficial, right? I, it'll be great for Ethereum as a as an ecosystem, you know, so I, th I think the I think the ETH killers have their work cut out for them. It's a, you know, the perfor performance is coming and gas prices are coming. And that's, that's all ahead of like EIP 1559. So, you know, not not to geek out too hard, but I, I, I like Ethereum. I like the developer community. It's very uh, robust. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Gary, you know, the, in, in your thoughts, do you believe or have you watched the Ethereum Cardano battle? Because that's really it, right? Ada was supposed to be the battler that was going to win and make everything cheaper and uniform. And now the developers are making it, you know, easy. So what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not watching the battle, although I'm an investor. I'm not watching it. <laughs> Uh, for all kinds of different reasons, but I'm not watching that battle. I've been, you know, more focused lately on on uh, banking and some other financial services area with some of the AI technology. So I'm an investor. I'm in the crypto whales group, and I'm not a whale. I'm a minnow, but <laughs> I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm just. I I I get too deeply into it. Once I get into it. I start to dive in too deep and it consumes me, totally consumes me. So I've tried to stay out of it, even with the, uh, the investment uh, Quorum made in uh, Miami, the 4.8 billion. I, I, I'm there, but I'm not, uh, I'm not a Bitcoin. I'm there, but I'm not totally in it because I just, I don't want to get distracted a bit. We just, uh, so uh, I'm not the, uh, I'm not the uh, person to talk to. I'm like an ostrich at this point with it. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, I mean, it's, you know, honestly, it's like so in and out and up and down. If I start jumping in, that's what's going to consume me every single <laughs> second of every day. So what no. we've been we've been working on, you know, so we've been working on. I'm really interested in things like hyper personalization banks. I'm I'm interested in the customer experience. I'm concerned about you know you know the future robotic process automation. All those cybersecurity, I'm deeply concerned about cybersecurity right now, and we're not talking about it in I don't mean here, I mean in general, like we should decentralize cybersecurity, which is critically important because we've already had probes of uh, quantum computers from not nice people, uh, you know, testing. So we need to look at some other directions. I've been focused on that, quite frankly. Yeah, I guess to bring that back up, you know, what the probes from not so nice people what where are we in that i guess chain of being able to protect ourselves because you're right you know, with the idea of the cybersecurity, no one really is talking about it because they're all developing they're all in creation mode and more so than ever i uh, you know finally regular people are understanding two-factor authentication is necessary but it, it seems like that's even too late for people to lose their funds i think cash App. <laughs> Exactly. I'm a noble. You know, we're, uh, you know, you, you know, our friend Ragu. Ragu and I are partnered up on one of the companies and working with some of the top people, former CSO Apple, um, uh, interesting folks are involved with this on that project. And what we're seeing right now is I'm really concerned because we, we look at how we protect our data today and we need to come up with entirely new methodologies, you know, splitting the data up. Uh, decentralizing that data, encrypting that data, and really protecting themselves from these bad characters, these bad actors that are out there uh, today. So 
the co that company is split by. And I see cybersecurity, we have not, we've been so aggressive with this digital transformation, it's almost like we put cybersecurity on the uh, back burner from my own perspective. And I'm dealing with, you know, some of the top folks on the, in the, actually in the world. And I think that what I see is here we are with all these digital assets that are out there. At the same time, you're right, two-factor identification, all that. But think how much money, including mine, is out, right? And, you know, we, we've got these uh, bad characters coming up with, imagine a quantum computer is 100 million times faster than a supercomputer, right? One estimate. And what is that in perspective? Well, something that takes 10,000 years takes 200 seconds. So we need to come up with these aggressive technologies to be able to combat the, the uh, challenge. And, you know, people still use <laughs> passwords that are names of their kids and their dogs and, and those kind of things. It's incredible to me. So this has to fundamentally change. I'm interested in that. I'm also interested with this digital transformation in the banking experience, hyper-personalization. We've had a year of really crappy times. We haven't been able to go into the bank. The banks have had to step up their game to go through this digital transformation and help us to adjust accordingly. You know, if we look forward, think about it, the entire digital transformation, McKinsey said, was gonna happen over the next 10 years. We had to speed it up and we had to do it in a matter of months to be able to compete. So what, where I see it is we've got this hyper-personalization, we got robotic process automation, we got to fundamentally change the way that banks do business, did business before because the model coming in and sitting down and why should it take so long to get a loan? You know, uh, take uh, six weeks to go in. I understand you're gonna get your certification for your house inspected and all that, but it should never take that long. It should take a matter of minutes. We have enough data to be able to do it. So those are the kind of things that I'm really interested in, um, you know, right now. I think they're critical and cybersecurity is at the top of the list. For sure. Miko, you know, you guys, Evercoin has a wallet and you guys are dealing with security issues in addition to uh, the DeFi. Like, where do you imagine things are going to go towards the end of the year? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, just touching this, touching the trend of cybersecurity, I think one of the things that's been this incredible kind of barrier around DeFi adoption is kind of self-custody, right? So in a sense, like we just need as an industry to deliver much, much smoother self-custody experiences. I think the paper wallet is a kind of a, not a great industry standard, you know, but, but you know, everyone seems to adhere to it. So, you know, th those are my broad thoughts, but, you know, I think with respect to what I see in forecast, you know, my personal thesis and your mileage may vary is that, you know, Ethereum is the kind of, uh, kind of granddaddy of extensible blockchain and DeFi. So, you know, I think in some ways because of the ERC standards and the smart contracts, you know, it basically DeFi is Ethereum DeFi and NFT is Ethereum NFT, you know, and I obviously know that there's flow blockchain with NBA top shots and there's, you know, there's other alt chains. So I'm not discounting those. And I think open source kind of drives interest in all of those. But I, I, I do think that, you know, the future for that, that Ethereum blockchain seems very bright, especially in the second half of the year. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like Ethereum blockchain. I'm also a big fan of Wax and EOS and what they're doing over there too. So everyone's got their favorite, their favorite We're places. We're only uh, investors in Wax, so we we you can't uh, we can't say bad things. <laughs> we don't want to actually. It's they're great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And and where, and where do you guys see you know security playing a significant part of what you guys are doing? Because you're saying Europe is behind Alexander. And they're just now getting caught up with even the idea of DeFi and, you know, bank challengers. So where do you see security as well as, uh, you know, to, to Miko's point, custody handling uh, in these scenarios? Because we all know DeFi is you are responsible for what you own when it comes to crypto. Yeah, De DeFi, I let Bogdan talk about maybe, but uh, just uh, Gary... Um... You sub, what you talked about, you, you cannot imagine how often we're getting hacked or try, the, the, attempted to be hacked. Yeah, it's I mean, hacked. You know, it's a, it is absolutely it's, crazy it's, the data breaches of probing is taking place right now. It, it's unbelievable every every minute almost. Yeah, so it's like 
we have a, an excellent system which is like same like all the big banks using so we so far we we, we managed we had sometimes we had a bit of downtime but um it's nuts and we are we are still nobody yeah but it's uh, they're testing us and uh bogdan is, is thankfully and our team they're coming partially from that part uh which was uh supposed to test let's say like this uh, um, uh, companies and the other subject i want to jump on is this uh, loans micro, uh, like w what you would see on our presentation or on our web page one of these services we're going to onboard is a microfinance uh, a lending uh, and and this we we actually we partnering with with someone who is able to to have the go the approval for 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 lending within uh, five minutes? Yeah, so this is really a game changer, and we're going to uh, not only for individuals, but we're going to in introduce this for um, business as well. Um, in the US, the banking uh, like it's pretty easy still to get loans from what what I know. Um, Europe, um, Middle East. Uh, it's 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 nuts. It's amazing. You, uh, it's it's very difficult, especially for small, medium-sized business. Um, this is like what we're targeting. Yeah. So the underbanked as well. This is like, but that's that's for the future. At the more like up from next year, this year we 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 just target um, the the young generations and even them. Microfinance is is is. Uh, is a beautiful uh, solution which everyone needs deferred payments so you know it's like you cannot imagine how much music is in that field and uh, we we talk about um, substantial need requirements especially now it became a bit more risky now due to covid uh, so we 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 didn't onboard it right we will not onboard it right away yeah, but uh, the the uh, the failure rates apparently gone up naturally because people simply struggling. But once there's a stabilization in normal financial systems and uh, like cash flow for people uh, receiving the salaries, we will definitely onboard this right away uh, on our platform. Diffie, uh, um, Bogdan, you want to talk about this a bit? Yeah. Okay. So about security and DeFi, because uh, here uh, uh, I heard that you asked about Uniswap, and uh, yeah, we are we haven't planned uh, to integrate the, this kind of services like a compound with a low of uh, interest and uh, blending of uh, Uniswap, uh, tra uh, decentralized trading, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, we are just waiting to see exactly what is the right solution because we are not uh, looking to reinvent the wheel, just to make it better. And uh, from a security point of view, and also regarding the decentralized part, our focus is also will be to uh, teach the user uh, with uh, resources and stuff like that, with videos on YouTube. We want to teach the user to give him a, a financial education first and with how to use our app. And also through our uh, intuitive uh, user experience. That's the most important. Yeah. But in yes. regard to it, with DeFi, we have in plan to imp to uh, implement it and take the available protocols that are working and they're nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're coming to the top of the hour, guys. And so, you know, the biggest thing I'd like to know is where do you see uh, over the next three, six months coming into uh, the end of the year, where do you see really this whole financial sector side of uh, blockchain going is it are we looking at mass adoption this year or are we fight are we just going to kind of continue to limp on we're only a small set we're going to be jumping on miko I'll, I'll, and then tell us where to find you and links and everything so miko i'll start with you yeah i'm the easiest to find uh just on miko.com and mikeo.com that's my web page you can get my twitter and linkedin and things off of that uh with respect to kind of the future you know, of what the mass adoption kind of prospects are. I see that there's some really big people moving into the space, obviously, like Visa, MasterCard, you know, and we're seeing these kinds of things. The thing that's fascinating about mass adoption is, is that, you know, we may, those people may not be 
kind of Bitcoiners, but I, I think that they are talking about, you know, Visa and MasterCard are both talking about allowing their users to potentially buy buy and spend Bitcoins, right? Which I think would be a huge catalyst. So, you know, we, we, I think that the catalysts are there, uh, you know, so we just have to see uh, what's happening. But, you know, judging from kind of where I sit, like, you know, it's definitely entering the mainstream mindset. It's just a question of whether the mainstream you know, goes in on this or not. But, uh, you know, I think people are become, the awareness is is increasing uh, quite, quite astonishingly. So, you know, we're definitely getting a lot more awareness, which is great. What, what, are, you, what are your thoughts, Gary, on the same question to you? And where can yeah, we get a cold? A, I mean, we've crossed the chasm. So the key is we finally, you know, it was a funny, I had a conversation with uh, Coram Shroff. It's got a million Bitcoins. And we were talking about blockchain a couple of weeks ago and uh and um he he did that investment in miami and one of the things that we talked about is you know what's what's changed he said <laughs> it's what's changed is that you know bitcoin blockchain they looked at us as drug dealers a few years ago and you know now he's got a million bitcoins so it things have dramatically shifted today because the mainstream has picked it up and you see these trends noble what's happened you know, when we first, I did one of the first e-commerce consulting companies, people were laughing in the beginning. They said, nobody's going to put their credit card online. You know, this was when Amazon was still selling books. And I started working with a, um, a partner company, Broad Vision. And we came up with this, this e-commerce consulting company. And I saw the shift take place. Now everybody just accepts it as that's the way it is. And the same thing's happening on the blockchain side. It's just, we've been spurred forward by this pandemic. It's helped change things because people understand they need to do things a lot differently and they need to be a lot more efficient in the processes. So what I see is I see mass adoption is around the corner, but you're still going to have, it's not there yet, but the good news is the big players have made people, you know, remember IBM used to say fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They've gotten to the point where people now feel more secure that the decision's going to be the right one and they're not going to get fired for doing it. Nice. Uh, Alexander, the same question yeah. to you. Where where, where do you see us uh, end of the year in the adoption? And uh... yeah, uh, well, it's like uh, I think. Um, of course, I don't have to tell you, Miko and, and Gary. And I think Gary, you just like corrected. Just it's not blockchain. It's not just about Bitcoin, right? Just yeah, for yeah. everyone else who's listening. So Bitcoin yeah, is just exactly. It's, I, I, it's 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 not at all. So we talk here about uh, smart contracts. We we talk about like an entirely new um, in, environment to, to structure the whole administrative systems of governments, of institutions, etc. That's, that's what, what blockchain is about. And um, where do you see us in six months? Well, look, uh, I'm, I'm living in Dubai and, and they have um, announced two years ago, I remember two years, was it two, two, 2018, they announced by 2020 the whole uh, government structure is and everything what you're dealing with, with the authorities will all be on blockchain. So now we have 2021 and we are not yet there, but um, they're actually pushing it. And not only here, if you look to Asia, um, they're ahead of, of all this massively. And it's just a matter of... Um, Having what we talked before about it, the speed is so far we, we have not yet reached the, the right technology, the right speed level. So if uh, Ethereum and Co manage to, to, to work on that part, well, it will most probably take another year or two. Um, so I don't see us very far in half a year yet. But what the pandemic definitely helped for is, is an understanding in the population that they understood indeed what Gary said. It's like, we're not talking about drug dealers, etc. PP. You know, the ones who, the ones who know, this is like in the opposite. Through blockchain, you can get the drug dealers, whoever thinks that they can hide. If you have the right technology, it's the opposite. Whoever's using dollars should be called yeah, this one. Anyway, it's uh, so from where, this perspective. Where can we find you, Alexander? Where, where can Sorry? we find you? Where can we find you and, and connect with you? Uh, yeah, well, it's like um, just contact QuantoPay. 
www.quantopay.com, uh, info at quantopay.com. Uh, it's on the web page. I'm myself, um, you see my name, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have an international law firm. I have an international uh, business consultancy. Um, I am in different fields and uh, this FinTech crypto is fascinating me only the last five years. So I'm pretty new to the subject, but it's, uh, it's amazing. So um, you would find me on, the, uh, on LinkedIn. Just put my name in and, and my contact details. Otherwise, just simply through QuantoPay and uh, whatever questions you have, or um, happy awesome. to talk to anyone. Thank you. You're welcome. And then uh, Bogdan, any any last thoughts on adoption and what's happening towards the end of the year? Uh, yeah, I think this depends much on the pandemic, you know, because pandemic is what makes people stay in front of the computer right now. And this is why the, the, it grows so much in the last time. I'm just waiting to see exactly if it's the second wave this time and third time is a charm. It will be a mass adoption. But I am 50-50, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see exactly uh, the how nice. the pandemic is uh, handled, handled. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, my, my biggest concern is, you know, cash pay, uh, you know, subsidiary of Stripe started allowing people to buy Bitcoin on their app and started having people interact. And they are the number one uh, considered unsafe apps currently right now. And people are getting people have been getting their Bitcoin stolen. People have been lock, locking, logging in and stealing their money and their funds. I think that, you know, if there is any mass adoption towards the end of this year, uh, we have to really be cognizant, you know, to Gary's point earlier on, of the security of this system. And even to, to Miko's point, we've got to figure out a way to make the self-custody so much easier and simpler because the average person is just not going to get it over the long haul. Uh, we've got to really figure this, this side of it out. So I think that mass adoption is, is probably still far away in the sense that people really understanding it, but people using it, I think that that's right around the corner. People using it, trying to buy stuff, trade it, et cetera. But I think there's going to be a lot of growing pains over the next 12 months uh, of people making mistakes, having <laughs> altcoins and Bitcoin, <laughs> et cetera. So it's, it's going to be a really interesting time. Yeah. That's, <laughs> an old, that's exactly old. right, right? It's like that's one of the concerns. People are coming into trying it out and – forgetting their passwords and losing things and buying the wrong kind of coins. They don't even know what they're buying. Transfer on the wrong chain. It's going to be crazy. So exactly. like, like that I'm telling things. you guys, the young generations, they don't have that issues. They, whoever watched that now from, from generation, you know, whatever uh -huh. is below 40, they don't have that issue. And they're using already crypto. They already... It's uh, it's it's already from, from from that perspective, the younger generations, intuitive, they're already using it all. It's a question of whether our generation plus uh, they will ever adapt to it. Uh, that's a big question mark. But actually, that's why it's not our market. It's not our target group. And most probably, it's better they don't use it. We have some of <laughs> the older older investors uh, or like older users contributors who participated in our uh, initial exchange offerings on the crypto side, and they keep on losing their, uh, their, 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 their wallet access, you know, it's like, and you just don't get it back. It's, if you lose it, it's gone. So it's, 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 uh, it's a different world. And, yeah. Well, I want to say thank you to Latokin, VCTV, Maria, for putting on this event, getting all these great pe people to speak. Uh, as always, thank you, Kyle. I was happy to guest host for you today. And at the end of the day, reach out. So you can find me on LinkedIn, No Older Cone on LinkedIn. You can reach find me on tr Twitter, uh, at Dracone. You can find my company, uh, my gaming company, wearplaygames.com or draconecapitalpartners.com. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for a great talk. Uh, looking forward to learn more about Quano, uh, Quano Pay. And you guys have a great rest of the day and your time.